As school starts back up, teachers still have a lot of concerns. Some of those were outlined Tuesday through the State Teachers Union, Education Minnesota. I bounced back and forth with looking for other jobs and trying to figure out if a um, leave of absence for a year was right for my family. Sarah Havisto, a teacher in Two Harbors, requested accommodations from her district because her daughter is a preemie at high risk for COVID. She had to wait a month before finding out she was approved to distance teach. Last night, I got an email from my principal late telling me that I did not have to come in today for our first day back. And I just know there are lots of people across the state that are waiting for that phone call that are not going to get that phone call before they're before they have to go back in person. Some are choosing not to wait. Tom Connell, president of Education Minnesota Edina, says they've had two teachers leave the district because they did not receive accommodations or weren't hearing back. His advice to the district? Slow it down. Uh, I just came out of a meeting with um, our district administrators and our school administrators, and they uh, asked me for my input, and that's exactly what I said. I, it's hard to see that um, we've got the staffing for one, but we've also got some critical safety questions and instructional design questions. Reopening the buildings in a politicized pandemic and a national racial reckoning is the most difficult thing any of us in education has ever done. If it takes more time, fine, take the time. President Denise Speck says that applies to distance learning too. Also, some teachers are already facing issues with protocols around reporting cases of COVID. All districts need to make protocols around reporting a priority. Not only do they need to make it a priority, they need the transfer of that information around the protocol to be a priority for all stakeholders. There are also concerns around racial equity. Several of our staff have heard concerns and questions from our non-English speaking families. Even after the district attempted to communicate with multilingual families, Many did not understand the process, the choices, or the deadlines for enrolling in our district's distance learning program called the Distance Learning Academy. Special education teacher Heather Bakke urged for the Senate to pass the HEROES Act to send more federal aid to schools. Right now, public schools are fending for themselves to find a way for PPE, cleaning supplies, fixing sinks, <laughs> additional technology and more. No matter what learning model districts go with, Education Minnesota says it's important to stay flexible. What our public schools look like in September will probably not be the way they look in November. It's imperative that policymakers at all levels create spaces for frontline educators, school staff, and parents to make their voices heard.